God, why? Why? I prayed desperately and you didn't save him. We prayed together in faith, you didn't save him. They executed him. Was James too deep in sin that he didn't save him? Did I not have a, enough faith for you to consider saving him? Did you not love James enough to save him? The answer to these questions is no. But we're here today because it's so important and what's important is your soul and I know that many people pray and some people don't know who to pray to but a lot of people pray out of duty it's something that I should do so I'm going to pray but a lot of people pray out of desperation and I want to speak to those people today who pray from desperation now let's not beat around the bush we know that this city is full of pain brokenness suffering as we speak now, there's thousands of people in the RVI hospital. This week or the week before, we heard about how many people had lost their lives in an earthquake. How many prayers have been offered up on their behalf? I want to go ask you guys on a personal level, how many times have you prayed out of desperation and it just feels like you haven't been answered? Maybe it was at the side of a loved one as they were sick, but yet they passed away. Maybe you're in desperate need of a breakthrough, but yet it seems that God didn't hear you. So you come to the understanding of, do you know how hard it was for me to pray, but yet you didn't hear us? So God, if you are real, you don't care. Maybe you have cried out in desperation, but yet you don't understand why God hasn't heard you. I want to tell you this, that God promises to hear the prayers of his children. And the question is, are you one of God's children? The Bible says that he is close to the brokenhearted, that he does not turn away a broken and contrite heart. So I call out to those today with a broken and contrite heart, I want to minister to that pain, to that suffering and to the reality of a God who is righteous, who is holy, who is sovereign, but a one who cares also. In the beginning of the church, we read about it in the book of Acts. So Jesus has died at the cross, he's filled his people with the Holy Spirit, and the church is born. Now, when the church was born, there were so many miracles, signs and wonders happening. There was people being healed left, right and centre. People were getting saved like nothing else. The church was being added to. It was powerful, it was beautiful. People's faith was through the roof. They believed that God could do anything. When they prayed, stuff happened. But we read also, as time went on, that persecution started to happen to the people of God. That although these things were happening, people hated the message of the gospel. Much like what you've seen here today, there's been opposition. They couldn't stand what was going on. People wanted to do their own thing, their own way. They didn't want to hear about this Jesus. They were happy he was crucified. And the church, the Bible says that those were the people who turned the world upside down. And the world did not like it. They wanted the church locked up. They wanted them shut down. They wanted them killed. So this went from being public to being political. See, King Herod at the time, he, he didn't want any uproar, he didn't want any bother, he wanted to be seen to be doing the right thing in the eyes of the public, so that he decided if he could just get rid of these Christians, if he could just get rid of the church, it would make them look good. The, the powerful people who wanted the Christians God would like him. So that's exactly what he did. He called for Peter, a rock and pillar of the church, and James, another powerful brother in the church at the time, to be captured. 
Now the church heard that Peter and James were captured, right? And they prayed, they put their hands together for James. And they were in a place where they believed that God could deliver. They believed that God could save. And the truth is that he, he could, he can. But what happened to James? Was James freed? Was James liberated? Did they go back and have a massive celebration? The fact that these people had captured them and then they were set free? The answer is no. Their brother James was killed by the hands of the people who hated God, who, people who hated the gospel. He was killed. He was put to death by the sword. They chopped his head off. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine all the fervent prayer for the, your loved one? The one who served Jesus, the one who encouraged you, the one who you sat hand in hand with praying, was captured, you prayed, and then he lost his head? Can you imagine all the questions that somebody might ask? God, why? Why? I prayed desperately and you didn't save him. We prayed together in faith, you didn't save him. They executed him. Was James too deep in sin that he didn't save him? Did I not have a, enough faith for you to consider saving him? Did you not love James enough to save him? The answer to these questions is no, that's not true. But yet the church found themselves in a position that James was executed and Peter was on death row. See, the Bible tells us in Acts 12 that Peter was under heavy guard. I'm not just talking about one or two guards, I'm talking about heavy guard. He found himself in the middle of a prison with sentries at the door and then some out at the further gate and then he found himself chained to one guard on his left hand and one guard on his right hand. Like that. And the next day, he was due to be executed. And we pick the Bible up and we see that it tells us that Peter was in prison, one God on his left and one God on his right, asleep. Peter was asleep in the prison the night before his execution. And the Lord sent an angel to wake him up. So the Bible says the angel of the Lord knocked Peter and he came to. And the chains fell off his hands. So Peter was once captive, but the chains fell off. And they stood up, the doors were open, and the angel led Peter out to an iron gate, which opened before them. And then they walked through and then were out. And then the angel disappeared and Peter went and they knocked on the door of the church. And they could not believe that Peter was free. They couldn't believe it. He went from being captive, chained up in prison, with a death sentence, with no hope, but God sent his angel to deliver him, and he was free. And there's a few questions that arise here. How was Peter asleep? Think about this. You've just lost one of your closest friends. He got decapitated for the faith, right? He lost one of your closest friends, but yet you find yourself on death row. The next day you're down to be, likewise, probably publicly killed. But you find yourself asleep? What is it that Peter knew? You don't know? Well, what Peter knew was the same thing that James knew, mate. The new God. The new God. They knew the peace of God was not found in their circumstance but a person. Not in, the, not in the self. Not in their self. They knew that their hope was not found in their own strength, in their own circumstance, because nobody could be delivered out of that. And although James had lost his head, they knew that their faith and hope was in Christ. And because of that, the grave has no victory and death has no sting. So even if you are alive, you live for Christ. If you die, you be with Christ. So you cannot lose. That is the assurance and the hope that they have. So James and Peter were both willing to live as much as they were willing to die. They were willing to live for Christ as much as they were living to die for Christ. And now that is the hope of a Christian. If I'm here, I'm here in the pain and in the suffering, but at least Christ is with me. If I die, I get to be in glory with him. See, this is the hope. 
that the Christian has. See, Paul, the apostle, he also writes something very similar, right? He says we were burdened beyond belief. Our life was crushed. Our life was beaten down. They hated the message so much, but we pressed on in Christ. But we got to the point where we were so heavy burdened, where we were crushed and broken. But yet we had a hope that wasn't found in ourselves. It wasn't found in our own strength, our own efforts, because that was beaten out of us. We realized that God is the solid foundation for our hope. Blesses you. Yes, no right, doubt you will, mate. God bless you, mate. Well, you've got the message now. What are you going to do with it? Take care. Right. So, turn the world upside down through Jesus Christ. Um, so, back, back to what I was saying. So, Paul, Peter, and James knew something that many people here don't know, and they knew, knew the person of Jesus. They knew that if they lived, it was for the glory of God. If they died, it was for the glory of God. And because of who Christ is, death has no sting and the grave has no victory. And I say that to you guys today. Although we live in a place of pain and suffering and death, in Christ, you can also know that death has no sting and the grave has no victory because in Christ we will be risen with him again. And we can be risen with him again because Christ rose from the grave. So I don't know where you are today. I don't know how many times you've cried out to God. But God is calling out to Newcastle today. Here at the hippie green. To come and know him. To repent and believe the gospel. And to the broken person, the depressed person, the one who's suffering the most, the one who's offered up the most prayers, I want to say to you today, continue crying out to God. And to those people who say, well, God's not fair. God is not fair. You say all of this, preacher, but how come my daughter has lived a life with no, no eyesight? She's been blind since birth. She's lived all of her adult life completely blind. Well, I would say to you, in Christ, when you go to heaven on that day, the person who's lived their life not being able to see but having Christ in their heart, will the first thing they will see is the glory of the Heavenly Father. The first thing they will see is paradise and perfection. Okay, preacher, what about that person who's been paralyzed all the days of their life. God's not fair. How come they've lived in a wheelchair in pain all of their days? And you're telling me God is love? I want to tell you today, in Christ, when you have Christ, you know the promise that one day, that person who's not been able to take a single step, they will run to the arms of their Savior in glory. See, this is the good news. Okay, preacher, I've lived my life with manic depression. I want to tell you this, that in Christ, the first thing that you will feel is the everlasting joy of being in the presence of your God, your friend and your Savior. So I ask you today, do you understand that in this life we will have trouble? But Jesus Christ says this, take heart for I have overcome the world. So Newcastle, it is in Christ that you can have a hope. Now I speak directly to every single person's heart here today. Some of you are listening, some of you are pretending that you're not, and some of you are mocking. But what is going on is a reaction. Who do you say that Jesus is? Today will you come to the Saviour, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one who knows all things. And I understand that God's ways are sometimes difficult to understand because the Bible tells us that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. But one day, you're going to stand alone before him and you're going to give an account for all that you've done. And my heart for you is that when you stand there, you can stand there in confidence saying that Jesus is my saviour and for that reason, you are my father. Continue to seek him with your whole heart and you will find them. And we're here to pray for you, we're here to talk to you, we're here for all of that. It's so important, it's so important. Anything you want to talk about, let's talk about it. Because if I'm wrong, ignore me. 
reject me. But if I'm right and what I'm saying about Christ, it means everything. So listen, I look to every single person in this place. Jesus is the only way for you to have hope and assurance that one day he will take every tear, wipe it away. He will make all things new and you will know the joy of salvation. God bless you.